Hi, everyone. Welcome. I see a lot of people that have been here since 8 a.m. So I know we're like hanging on by a thread waiting for lunch, but I appreciate you being here. As we get started, I'm going to share my screen in a moment. Um, if you don't mind just putting in the chat your name, college, um, discipline or department, just so we have an idea who's in the room. I see lots of online um, experts in the room. <laughs> So we have a lot to draw from here. Okay, let me just get all set up. Thanks for your patience. Okay, thank you everyone um, for sharing where you're from. We have people from all over, which is awesome. Like I mentioned, I see uh, many of my friends and colleagues who are online experts. Um, so we'll be, I'll be sharing just some tips that I use um, and I'll have some points in there where we can also um, share things that you do. We'll just stay in this room. There won't be a breakout. We are not going to be using any other tech tools or anything like that. We'll just use the chat. Um, feel free to, to use the chat to share ideas, resources, or links um, throughout the presentation so that that's really a back channel for you to participate. Um, I also want to mention that in this presentation about kind of um, a quick overview of just three different ways that I use videos. I'm not going to be going over the how to's of how to do this. Um, we have the amazing Dave Giberson here, who I know does many, many presentations on, you know, just the nuts and bolts on how to do things. And we also have our amazing online faculty mentors here and online accessibility mentors here. And these are the people that, you know, do that hands-on training, make sure that everything's accessible and help you embed them in your Canvas course. Um, so I'm doing more of like just kind of sharing what I do, but it's not really um, an exact how to do this. Um, although I do have some resources for you. All right, so just to get started, um, on this slide is uh, a picture of me <laughs> and my um, social media handles. I wanna let you know that I identify as Filipino American and my pronouns are she, her. I am a medium skinned brown woman um, with long black hair and I'm wearing a green, uh, green blouse. So I do teach English and ELAC here at Miramar. Um, I have not always been interested in technology. My first teaching experience was actually at the California Men's Colony prison where there was no technology. Um, and then after I graduated, I taught in a small village on the edge of the Kalahari Desert in the Peace Corps. Again, zero technology. I'm also a Gen Xer, so you know, I know I remember a life before Netflix and um and TikTok and all of that. But all of that just to say that I've come a really long way into now realizing the power of video, um, the power of technology and online learning experiences to provide equitable opportunities for our students, especially now. So I just wanna get that out of the way. My bias is positive and <laughs> pro online education and pro video. So that's why I'm here. It hasn't always been that way. So I do wanna acknowledge my journey. Okay, so before we get started into this, I wanted oops, to begin by grounding a little bit in the research. So on this slide is a picture of two hands forming a heart, and the sentence says, research on men of color and first generation students in community colleges has emphasized that relationships before pedagogy is a tenant of effective teaching. This is by Dr. Luke Wood out of um, San Diego State University, who has done a lot of um, mixed methods research on supporting men of color, specifically in community colleges. So I begin with this because I often hear people say to me, like, there goes Denise making those silly videos with her dog and posting them. And like, I don't have time for that. And just kind of this idea um, that it's silly or fluffy to do these videos, but it is actually the most important thing we can do. 
for our students, especially in the online environment, is to form relationships with students. And video is really one of the best ways to make that happen. Um, also, I think it was somebody else that alluded to this. I think it was just yesterday. There was, um, was it yesterday, Rochelle? I can't remember what day it was. Um, but there was the CVC accessibility webinar and Jared Stein from Instructure presented some research about engagement. And in that slide, he talked about how engagement is a snowball. And if we start out with engaging students, the snowball effect gets larger and larger and they just become more and more engaged. But if they start out disengaged, the opposite happens and their disengagement slides even more deeply. So we wanna be able to get them right at the beginning so we have that snowball effect. Um, and so that's why I think video is super important. The other thing I want to mention is um, this quote or this line, the slide reads, the quality of instructor-student interactions influences online student performance most. This is research from Jaggers and Chu in 2016. They did their research specifically on community college students, and they looked at all course design elements, assessment, materials, technology inter, uh, integration, but the level of personal interaction was the biggest predictor of student grades. And I know that sometimes that seems weird or like it seems like that wouldn't be the case. We spend a lot of time working on our modules and making sure they're chunked correctly that we have. We spent a lot of time just now talking about assessment in the previous meeting. Uh, we make sure that we have our materials and our resources, but really the interaction and the presence is the, it, the biggest indicator for student success. Um, and that the quality of that interpersonal interaction um, relates specifically to student grades. Okay, so now that you have that background, let's take a moment with this slide. In this slide, there's a picture of a woman sitting down and she has a laptop on her lap. And the sentence says, when I view videos of others, I feel. And let's take a moment and just add in the chat, just maybe one to three words um, to complete the sentence. When I view videos of others, I feel. Thank you for sharing so many wonderful positive words coming in on the chat, words like connected, validated, um, supported, engaged, happy, um, welcomed, familiar. Let's look at the next slide. And in this slide, there is a picture of a woman presumably taking a selfie or, or making a video. She's holding the camera up to her face. And the sentence says, recording a video of myself makes me feel. And with the same one to three words, please complete this sentence. Recording a video of myself makes me feel. Awesome. Thank you so much for sharing. So we have some positive things in there, but we also kind of see the switch in the in the mindset or the feeling of when we record. We have words here like uncomfortable, pressure, anxious on stage, worried, vulnerable, nervous, as well as things like we feel present for our students and we know how our students feel or happy knowing that we can help someone. But I think this is where the disconnect happens with video because I do often hear pushback from, from others about creating video. We know how we feel when we watch others' videos, but the second we have to flip the camera the other way, we realize how vulnerable that is and how uncomfortable that is um, and how difficult that can be to make that switch. 
So what I want to do today is, as I mentioned, um, share three video tips. So on the slide, I have listed the three tips. So one is just to say hello. The second is as an assignment teaser and three as lectures. I want to point out because Katie's here, Katie Palacio, I know when I was just perusing the most site that Kara shared, there's a whole wonderful module about video integration with how to's. Um, and in addition to these three tips and styles of video, there's more. So I would really encourage you all to go to that um, most module and and get even more in-depth things there okay so on this slide is a picture of a broken plate and it says number one say hello imperfect is perfect so i'll share some of my silly imperfect videos because i just want to show that it doesn't have to be super time consuming because that is one of the biggest pushbacks that i often hear from faculty is like i just don't have time for this it takes me forever um, and you just kind of have to get get over that. Um, and when I do the hello videos, not like the talking kind of lecture content videos, but when I do the shorter kind of videos where I just want to connect with students, I just do one take. Um, I, I envision it of like if I'm walking across campus and I see a student and I wave at them. Or, you know, back when we used to be on campus and we'd all be like crowded out in the hallways, at least I was in the H building at Miramar and like classes would be coming out and then students would be waiting, we'd be like squeezing through students and I would just say hi and stop. That's the same kind of feel that I'm trying to get. So I don't worry too much about it being perfect. So um, over the next couple of slides, I'll share a few of them. I really, when we talk about turning the, um, the video and watching ourselves. I really don't like to watch my videos. I usually just post them and I'm like out in the ethernet. I don't want to watch it, but I'm going to have to sit through this. So here is a hello video from the beginning of this fall semester. Um, and this video I think is really important to me because I know that is the very first moment that students know who they are going to be in the classroom with in an online setting. So this is their first chance to see me. So I'll share a quick snippet. I love teaching online, and my favorite part is connecting with my students. I'm Professor Denise Maduli Williams, and I'm teaching English 101 and ELAC 145 fully online this semester at Miramar College. So welcome to all of my students. I am so glad that we have these online offerings so that you can continue to pursue your educational and career goals. I promise that we will form a strong community online and together we'll have fun improving your English and academic writing skills. Classes begin Monday, so check your email for a welcome message from me and instructions on how to get started. I can't wait to meet you. Okay, so I see some things um, about captioning. I just want to mention that this um, video, I'm using my phone for these hello videos, and I'm using the free clips app, which is an iOS iPhone app. Um, I don't think it's for Android yet, and although I know there's different, lots of different apps for, for, um, for captioning and recording videos on your phone. And that I just, it's the fastest way for me. And I have to say that the captioning is, the auto captioning is pretty, pretty good. I do have to go in and change some things, um, but there's lots of different things you can do. You can see that I, I put like little stickers in there. The captions run below. You can choose where the captions go. Um, and then I basically share those through my educator Instagram page. And then I also download them and share them on Canvas. Um, and push them out as announcements. And I don't have to bring these into Canvas Studio or YouTube for that because I'm just captioning live right on my phone. Um, so that saves another step. But again, I don't really use these for more than 60 second videos. Um, okay, so I wanna show you another style of video that I sometimes do. Uh, yes, Elizabeth, I have the slide deck that I'll share with you all and I'll put the links to all of the resources um, as the last slide. Um, so here really is a one take video. I'm going to play it and then I'll answer some questions in the chat while it's playing. So I don't have to look at myself. <laughs> Hi everyone. By now you are in the second week of the semester and you're kind of underway. You have gone through the introductory module and are getting right into course content. You probably have lots of assignments and readings and materials that you are working on already. So that means that you are on your computers a lot or on your devices as you are working on all of your course materials. I wanna encourage you to take breaks, to get outside when you can and make sure you have a chance to move around. So I am out here on my walk with Bella. Hi, there's Bella. 
I try to get outside for a couple walks a day and that helps break up my work on the computer. Let me know down below how you give yourself breaks and how you find ways to rest in between all of your work. Okay, so my dog Bella often makes appearances in my videos. Um, students ask about her from time to time. If anyone is on this Zoom and knows of a great um, app for video recording and captions that's not only iOS, please share it in um, the chat because this is, as people are mentioning in the chat, this is a, a free app for iOS. Um, Bonnie, yes, these are asynchronous online courses that I'm sharing with right now. All of my classes right now are still asynchronous online. So I'm not going to show these videos, but in the slide deck that I'll share with you, they're linked there. But just to give you like really one take just a hello like this was i was waiting for my sons to come out of basketball practice and i recorded a quick um video in my car just because i had started um, looking at some of the feedback i wanted to give them and i was and i was just happy i was like oh my gosh they're doing such a great job on their assignments and i just want to let them know so i just went in there um in the car while i was waiting and just did a quick video did a one take checked the captions and then shot it out to students right there while I was sitting um, in between practices. So it really does not take me that long. And then we'll talk about this in a moment, but in case, you know, there are options, it's sometimes very hard to show your face and you might want to step into this slowly or it might just not be the right day for it. So last year uh, we moved uh, and it was like, uh, I was exhausted. I also had just had like my second COVID booster, but I still wanted to do like a weekly video. So I was able to use, you can use, I can't remember what it's called. I guess it's not Bitmoji, um, but I was able to just cover my face. But it was really funny to, this is amusing to me, that the tiger, the faces move while you're talking. I'm just going to show two seconds so you can see. Happy Tuesday, everyone. I am a tiger today because I am not camera ready. If you saw my announcement, you know that my family and I moved, so I'm knee deep in boxes. Okay, so it's kind of silly, but they're still hearing the magical voice, my voice. This was not the first video they ever got from me, so they weren't like, this teacher is crazy, or, you know, this teacher is silly. They were able to see, like, Denise is still there, um, and they thought the video was really cool, and some people like were like, I didn't know we could do that, and then sent me little videos. So you can find ways to still connect with students, even if you don't want to specifically share um, your face. Yeah, I know I was really excited about the tiger as well. <laughs> okay, and then I do, I won't play this one, but I do want to say um, I was thinking about Will Burke this morning because he is the online um, accessibility mentor at Miramar talking about how he, how he has seven different classes every semester. And I also have multiple sections or, or multiple classes not seven, um, but it's like, wow, it's a lot if you're gonna record a video for every single class every single week. So I sometimes consolidate those. So this is a video that's just like checking in for week eight. And I just give a shout out to all my classes in the one video and then send that same video to all of the different classes. Um, so that's just kind of a little tip as you're working through how to stay high touch, even if you're in a distant environment. Um, and I won't play that one, but you can see that on the slides when I share after if you want to. Um, so this was one of a student's comment from a survey, end of semester survey last year. Um, it's a picture, the slide has a picture of a red heart. And it says the best part of the class was the Monday morning videos and seeing Bella. So I think so much about how you form relationships with students and how students feel that dread of logging in Monday and seeing like, how much work do I have to do this week? How many assignments do I need to take care of? Um, am I behind? Am I going to have enough time with all my commitments? to do this work and continue, you know, reaching for my goals online. But instead feeling like every Monday I get to check in, see how Bella's doing, and then hear from my professor um, in a welcoming way and get my week started off right. So that's one reason why I am really committed to doing these types of videos. Um, as I mentioned, I do share them on Instagram. And this slide is a picture of my Instagram page, which has um, uh, kind of the posts with the stills of my face. And it just says sharing on Instagram. Um, but I do that because it's the fastest way to get to students. Um, but not all students use social media. So I also, like I mentioned before, download them and share them through Canvas so students can see it whatever way they want. But I will say that I can see the views on Instagram fairly immediately 
as opposed to the views that take longer when it's pushed out through announcements on Canvas. Um, and the other thing that's really cool is that um, students from many semesters and years back still follow me and so they'll still pop in and say hi from wherever they are and what they're doing and it's just a really way to just continue to have that community of students and be engaged with them long after the class is gone so that's another reason why um, that works for me i know that social media is not for everybody um, some other ideas of things that I have done with just these little hello videos are kind of campus tours, like here's my office, here's how you find me walking across campus, here's a cool place to sit down if you need a break in between classes. Obviously, this is was the kinds of things I was doing before I was fully online. Um, if I travel, sometimes I'll do a little video postcard, like where is Professor MW? Does anyone know? And it's kind of funny because they usually do know. Uh, but again, it's this way of recreating a high touch feel um, in a distant setting. Um, and I do want to point out that at convocation this semester, we were given the message that community cannot be built online, and that is 100% not true. It's whether or not you make that community yourself, and we can make that, and we do. Okay, so let's take a moment here. Um, Lisa, I don't normally script these little silly ones out loud um, or these short ones. I usually just make a little kind of, I might have like a little post-it note of like things I want to remember to say, but I don't script these out. Um, the longer ones I sometimes will like make longer bulleted points so that I remember. Um, if you don't mind sharing, we have so many experts on here right now. Um, what are some other ways that you have said hello to your students with video? Other ways you use videos to say hello? Lisa, I love that you had your husband help you. Lots of people are mentioning Pronto. Absolutely, Pronto is a really quick and easy way. And then that goes right, right into your classes. Um, lots of fun ways to do memes and cartoons. Um, I saw that Rochelle posts a full welcome, a short welcome letter with an intro, um, pre-semester welcomes, welcomes to the midterms. Lots of different ways to stay in touch. Um, the Tiger video, Lena, it's an option in clips to choose when you record. I'll, I'll add a link to the slide deck for that because people are asking about the Tiger. Um, oh, I love that, Cara. New Year's Day with hopes for the new year. Um, yes, and Tracy, I love I, I love it too to make the videos away from the computer some, somewhere else um, and then upload them. Yes, and how-to videos, absolutely, Katie. Um, that's especially those are quick and easy to do on the fly too. If students are like all, all of a sudden emailing with questions on how to do something, you can just make a quick video. Um, and thank you, Dave, and others who are giving other um, ideas like CapCut and ClipChamp. Um, you can send a selfie video via Pronto, uh, Bonnie. You can send any type of um, media through through Pronto. Okay, I'm going to move forward. Okay, so the this slide has an image of like a movie clapboard with popcorn coming out on a yellow background. And it just says number two, assignment teaser. Um, why are we doing this? And I think someone just, Eileen is talking about assignment or module walkthroughs. So this is another type of video I do, which is a little more structured than the just hello video. Um, and it's my way of trying to kind of do a movie trailer for an upcoming assignment or something that we're going to be doing. And I find that that is a little more um, enticing um, and, and like lowers the anxiety for students as opposed to opening, you know, the Canvas page or the module with all the directions for like the big multi-draft essay we're going to do or opening the assignment and seeing the big long rubric with all these things that are expected, but to start that instead with a little bit of a teaser. And I do a lot of these, as you can see. So on the slide is a picture of my Canvas Studio um, library on the left. And so every semester I have a different, um, is it called a library folder? Yes, folder for each class. And then every week I do little teasers for what's happening in the week. And I don't use that time to explain it fully or to like drone on about it. I just do a little bit of a teaser. On the right side of that is just every single time Canvas 
studio trolls me and chooses the very worst thumbnail for my videos so there you go they kind of all look like that uh, but you can also change your thumbnails um, but this is a little more formal than the walk and talk or the car videos and so um, to Lisa's point I don't really script those out but I do have certain points I want to make um, another thing I do that can be less anxiety producing for us as instructors is I make short um, video teasers for papers or assignments and I use Adobe, used to be called Adobe Spark, Adobe Express video um, and I don't show my face in these. Um, so let me just play this one to give you an idea of a one minute teaser for um, an essay for one of my classes. Essay one, a first time experience. Every person has a story and every story counts. This first essay is a narrative piece where you get to write one of your stories. You're going to think back to one memorable experience, something that you did for the first time that you will always remember. Then you will use this story spine to organize your story. Once upon a time, every day, until one day, because of that, until finally, and ever since then. Memories are important and words matter. I can't wait to read your first time experience essay. So the workflow with that is I do script that out a little bit and then I create um, a video slideshow on Adobe Express Video and then I upload that into Canvas Studio which then captions it and then I share it, I embed it in the page. Um, so that's kind of the, the behind the scene workflow. I feel like you have some of those work through, uh, workflow um, tutorials um, on the most module about videos, Katie. Um, so that's something that um, you can look at for in terms of publishing and captioning. Um, I think that this is just a way better way to introduce something big that's going to be going on in the class. I have a similar one for this, like we have eight weeks building towards this big research paper in English 101, which is like a 10 page paper, you know? So instead of just giving them this huge PDF with all the assignments, um, it just is a, is a better way to step into something by teasing it. I haven't used PowerPoint to create video slides, but it's pretty much exactly the same idea, Lisa. So I would say if that's what you're familiar with, you could just do the same thing in terms of creating a video in that way. Um, so when you have these slides after, there's just kind of some more examples there. Um, I wanted to pull this um, sentence and share it with you. The slide has a picture of stairs that are lit up and the sentence says, the professors that had recorded videos were the most helpful. And this line jumped out for me when I read the SDCCD online um, distance ed report um, that was just released, I think last week that Brian shared. Um, this was from students in fall 2021 um, when asked like what was most helpful in your online learning experiences and uh, one of the key findings from this is our students in our district and our online classes is that intentional efforts by faculty to communicate helped address the challenges brought by the distance and online classes and they specifically called out the professors that recorded videos. So along with this idea of providing content, um, this slide has a picture of, you know, a small group of people sitting together and they're huddled around a computer screen and they're touching the laptop. And it says number three, lectures in quotes, because it's not really a lecture. Um, and it says short and sweet. So we know from research that the optimal length for a video for people to watch is six minutes. Um, and that basically what happens at that time is it just declines students stop watching um, and engagement decreases as videos lengthen so it doesn't mean that we only provide six minutes of content for whatever we're trying to cover uh, what it means for me is that i break things up into meaningful chunks so if i have a lot of content i want to cover i'll break that up into shorter videos i don't always hit that six minute mark but i really try hard not to go too far over that when i'm providing content um, and here's an example, and I, I realize that I'm giving all English examples um, because I teach English and ELAC, um, but hopefully you're thinking about how this will pertain to you and your discipline, how you can um, 
adapt these principles to yourself. But like when students are writing along, are, are writing an essay, and there's so many things to cover. I know there's English professors on here as well. Um, the first sentence, um, the, the thesis statement, topic and body paragraphs, transitions, um, citations, embedding quotes, like all of these things, instead of um, recording a super long lecture that includes everything I need to know or that students need to know, um, I just really break it up into minute pieces. So this is an example of um, thinking about the first line or the hook to an essay. And I used Adobe's, um, I keep saying Adobe's book, uh, Adobe Express Video for this. I'm just going to play just the beginning so you can get a taste of it. Let's talk about beginnings, the very first line of an essay. Oftentimes, the first line is called the hook, and this will answer the question, do we want to keep reading? You want your hook to catch the reader's attention. Since we are working on our own photo essay this week, let's look at some examples from the Humans of New York blog. As we look at these first lines, ask yourself which ones catch your attention. I'd been living a reckless life. I'm just going to pause it there because I think you kind of get the idea. Apologies that I keep forgetting to out, turn the captions on right away. So again, there are so many chunks to this bigger lecture, right? So then there's this one, there's a mini one on the topic sentence, on the thesis statement, on the introduction, on transitions, uh, but it just is a bite-sized piece for students to glean from um, and to work through at their own pace. Um, and again, if you, um, you know, are stepping lightly into recording your face or your yourself in a video um, recording like on PowerPoint like Lisa's brought up or or another tool like Adobe Spark using Canvas Studio and just sharing your screen instead are ways that students still know that we're a presence even if they're not you know seeing us in every single video. Um, just a couple more examples and I won't play them, but obviously there's way more than four reading strategies for academic reading, but what I did was break them down. So this one is just four and then they get another four later and then another four. So you can just kind of see, think for yourself how you might be able to break that up um, within your own discipline. Um, the other thing I think that's really helpful in longer videos um, is to pause and have something for students to do. So this is a longer, I think this one went over, I think it's seven and a half minutes um, about our favorite struggle in writing, including my own, which is run-on sentences. Um, so there's, you know, I kind of like a mini lecture on the run-on sentences examples. And then it's like, here's your turn. And literally in the video, I say pause go ahead and write it um, and then press play again and review it. And then you can see where you are with that and then they can share them. So finding ways to make those videos interactive is also really helpful. Um, I found that, you know, it's just a good way for students to be able to, to do that in a way where they're viewing something instead of just looking at it on the screen because things can just be so text, text heavy um, in the online environment. So again, coming back to that latest SDCCD Fall 21 survey, um, when students were asked what aspects of online classes helped you learn course content, one of the key findings was that professor-created videos embedded in Canvas help students learn course content. So I do pull lots of things from other sources because, you know, it's not like topic sentences have never been done before, um, but there is a difference that students have reported between us sharing outside sources or YouTube videos or ones that we have created ourselves and then embedded right in Canvas so that they can see it there. Um, so that's just something I wanted to bring up, um, especially, oops, helpful in the asynchronous online environment. So I have used Nearpod and Edpuzzle, but I, not as much as others. Um, and those are really great interactive ways for students to participate, to pause, to do something, or to interact. So thank you for sharing those. Okay, so let's pause here for a moment again. I know that Again, there's many people on here that have been doing this for longer than me. So what are some ways that you include content in your courses with videos? So beyond saying hello, whether it's a assignment teaser or how to, or um, you know, mini lectures, what are some ways that you include content with video in your courses?
Thank you for sharing. Um, Tracy, I had never thought of that. She had posted, if you didn't see her post, um, if she finds a great YouTube video, ask the video creator if I can use the video with my own voice. That's pretty cool. Many people are mentioned student created content videos. I think that's so important. Um, this is focusing obviously on the teacher side, but student created videos are super powerful. Um, I love the idea of field trips on video that Lisa's um, sharing. Um, yes, Monica, short grammar videos and then embedded those in Canvas quizzes. Kara, I, whenever you share about your art history class, I always want to take your class. I think one of these days I'm going to sneak into it. Um, musical um, YouTube videos, discussion forms, voice thread to bring in outside speakers. Wonderful. So many wonderful ideas. Um, I have to remember to save the chat so that we can add these to the slides as well. Yeah, so many different ways. Thank you for sharing. Um, I just went over these three, saying hello, assignment teasers, and lectures. Um, other types of videos that have you all have mentioned is, um, so video feedback um, is super um, easy in Canvas now. You can actually, when you go to type feedback um, for an assignment or anything, you can do audio and you can also do video. Um, in the um, presentation yesterday, um, with CBC uh, accessibility, a really powerful site for me was the one that said um, that they have students who feel more comfortable replying in speed grader rather than seeing us faculty during office hours and technology makes them feel they can ask. So I think that's a really important way to engage with students um, in the speed grader and using video if you can. Um, it allows students who wouldn't normally participate to do that. Um, how-to videos, um, again, especially with Canvas, you can just screencast and show how to do that. Um, and then obviously student created videos are really important. Um, I do lots of student created videos, but there wasn't really, I decided not to add those in here. I'm just checking the chat, um, larger research projects, Yes, I love this idea that Marnie mentioned about having a video component for formal essays along with the readings. Um, and thank you, Katie, for posting the recording the, to the um, to the CBC webinar that I keep referring to. <laughs> okay, so again, this is not a how-to, but I did want to just mention the three tools that I use the most. So I use the Clips app for on-the-run quick videos, and any app that I think that you can use on your phone is the best for any of those like quick hello videos. Um, the captioning, live captioning is pretty quick, and then you can just get it out there very quickly. Um, and then it's movable, right? You can go wherever you want to. You can add fun things if you want to. Um, when I don't really want to show my face or I want to do more of like a video slideshow, kind of like a, a PowerPoint slideshow with, with, um, with video and voice, or sorry, with voice, um, I use Adobe. Express video. That just works out really well for me. They have um, open source um, images that you can add in. It's really easy to record. It's really easy to download and then upload. Um, and then whenever I think that I might be wanting to screencast or share something, then my default is always Canvas Studio. So my weekly videos to students, I almost always use Canvas Studio when I'm doing like just what's going on this week or what's going on in this module because I want to be able to switch from like being on the camera to flipping it and being able to show where we are in the module or where we are um, in an assignment or something that I want them to see. Um, again, I just feel like having it all within Canvas because the captions happen, you can embed it easily, it's all part of it. I don't really mess around too much with YouTube anymore because I don't have to ever since Canvas Studio has been part of it. So that's kind of the workflow that I've had. Um, I see we're already at 11.40. Um, okay, so I wanted to end with just a couple of quotes from students. So I did some interviews with students last year about their experiences. And one of the questions I asked was like, what was it like when you viewed videos or you saw your teachers in your online classes? And I'll never forget this one student who just really sadly said, I never saw them, it would have been nice to see my teachers. And she had gone through um, a semester um, just never having not even one um, visual video representation. And I just remember her voice just being, you know, kind of like that would have been nice. Um, so I just, I think about that a lot. And then on the other hand, when I asked a student about how do your, how do you know your instructors care about you? How do they show you care? Um, and this student just lit up and her face totally changed. And she said, she's working a lot. She was like driving, she was working, she was going to school. And she said, I would go to lunch. She would have her lunch 
and watch his videos. She's talking about her, um, her history professor. And she said, and it was so cool. That's the magic of being connected with someone when they care. And she went on to say that like those videos were just like, hello videos. He was with his kids or he was like reminding them of something, but that she felt when asked, like, how do you know they care about you was when they connected with her through video. Um, and then, I, as I as I mentioned earlier, it has been a journey for me. It is not especially easy to be vulnerable, to be on video, to take the time to do that. Um, but one of the best compliments I ever got from a student was after taking my online asynchronous class, and we never once met on Zoom, the student wrote, it felt like a real class. <laughs> and I was like, yay, it is a real class, you know? And um, that engagement really mattered to that student. Um, I do want to leave with one last kind of silly fun video. It's an app, and I believe it's um, any uh, mobile device. It's called Lumiere, L-U-M-Y-E-R, and it just, here, I'll just play it. This is what it does. So I sometimes put these at the end of a module, um, just like a little virtual high five, and it, you can just take a quick video, and then there's like kind of funny um, uh like this one was confetti, but there's fireworks and things that you can do. So I usually end a module with a silly kind of silent video. You don't talk in it, but they know you're there. Um, so I want to end our session like this. And we only have three minutes, um, but I do want to ask if anyone wanted to unmute um, and share something. Just um, what are you thinking now? What questions do you have? Um, maybe what recommendations or suggestions do you have? And I will stop sharing. I'm going to add, um, I used Haiku Deck for that, but I put it in a Google slide. So I'm going to share this link and I will add, based on the questions that came up in the chat, a resource slide at the end with links to the tools um, and to some of the other things that came up in, in our chat. But I want to thank you so much for your participation and um, value the fact that we're supposed to end at 11.45, but two minutes if anyone would like to share what they're thinking, questions or recommendations, feel free to unmute or add something in the chat. Why don't students like Zoom classes? Oh, well, that's another. Um, I'd like to know why students don't like Zoom classes. I teach a Zoom class and to me, it seems like they like it. But it was asserted in chat that students don't like Zoom classes. Oh. I think the different students, like, I'll just say, this is just my personal opinion. I think different students have different needs and different students like different types of classes. Um, I've taught both, you know, live classes with Zoom and without and hybrid. And I just think personally, I know that different students, um, you know, relate differently in those different settings. But yeah, I think it's hard to say that all students don't like one particular type of modality. Okay, thanks yeah, a lot. I, I put the comment and I'm just from my own experience, um, students, partly because they have to be there at a specific time and it can be challenging for students yeah. who are working. Um, but I also had students tell me they had a hard time paying attention or um, you know, things like that. And I actually have really liked, um, preferred teaching fully online myself too, for that reason, because I actually think the students have been more engaged in the fully online class, as long as you're, you know, humanizing them. Mm -hmm. Zoom is a fully online course. So we're not talking about hybrid. I'm talking about teaching in a, a synchronous Zoom class, which is fully online. And one way to keep them engaged is to um, continuously have them go into breakout rooms. Yeah. yeah, I'm sure that's a great idea. Yeah, thank you both for your comments. I do think that there's, you know, generalizations about both types of settings. Um, and I do think that I know that there has been some great work out of Out One recently about um, good interactive activities um, on Zoom, right, to make sure that students are engaged. Right. Well. Thank you so, for your comments, both of you. I want to value our time. It is 1145. Thank you for sticking with me so much. I appreciate all of you that are here. Um, and I will add a resource um, slide to that link I sent with you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank, Thank you.